Silicon Valley Bank collapsed on Friday. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank is causing shockwaves across the entire business world. This is Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history. It is the epicenter of tech startups, venture capital, Silicon Valley Bank. It is the 16th largest bank, or it was, in the United States. The collapsed bank had invested in around 21 Indian startups. The bank stock lost 80% of its value this week, 60% in one day alone. The management of these banks will be fired. Investors in the banks will not be protected. Federal officials have been working around the clock to try to find some resolution in the wake of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. It is and should be a matter of concern. Indian startups that have deposits at SVB might be impacted as well. Hi everybody, on 10th of March 2022, one of the largest banks in the United States was shut down. And this bank, as we all know, is none other than the Silicon Valley Bank. Now the reason why this is a very, very big deal is because it is the largest bank to have failed since the 2008 financial crisis and the second largest bank failure in the US history. And this has created such a chaos in the market that while on one side analysts think that it's going to lead to a bank run, on the other side, they said, with the startup funding drying up, this is going to be a nightmare for both Indian and American startups associated with the Silicon Valley Bank. So in this episode today, let's try to understand what is this Silicon Valley Bank crisis all about? Why is it such a big deal in the global startup ecosystem? How did such a big bank fail in such a short time? How does it affect the Indian startup ecosystem? And most importantly, what are the study materials to help you understand this banking crisis better? This video is brought to you by Think School's Communication Masterclass course. People, if you love the way we tell stories and if you also want to present your ideas in the most effective manner possible, come join our Communication Masterclass course. Communication Masterclass is a six weeks course whereby I will take you step by step to take you from the beginner's level all the way to a TEDx level presentation skill. And the highlight of the course is that if you have any doubts regarding the course, I will go live on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis to personally answer all of your questions. On top of that, this course also has special exercises that will help you master your communication skills in just 12 weeks. So if this sounds useful to you, join our Communication Masterclass course from the link in the description. The Silicon Valley Bank was a commercial bank that funded startups in and out of Silicon Valley. It served businesses and even venture capitalists. And after it was founded in 1983, it became the largest bank in Silicon Valley based on local deposits. And it was also the 16th largest bank in the United States. More importantly, SVB was a leading banker to some of the most successful startups in the US. In fact, reports say that it even catered to companies like Airbnb, Fitbit and Pinterest. So the question arises, when Silicon Valley Bank was the banker to such huge and successful companies, how did it fail and what did they do wrong? Well, this, like many, many other catastrophes, started with the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war. As we all know, the energy crisis sparked inflation all across the world and US was no different. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the United States saw its highest inflation in the last decade, whereby the inflation touched 9.1%. And this was no ordinary inflation, it was a shocking inflation. If you see this graph carefully, before the pandemic, inflation was just at 2.5%. But suddenly, after the pandemic, it spiked to 5%, and then after the war, it jumped to 9.1%. And whenever inflation spikes like this, what happens? The central bank of the country increases the interest rates. And this is something that you must have seen in the news all the time. The latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell told the Senate Banking Committee Tuesday that the Fed could raise rates higher and faster than planned. Instead of going down like it was during the pandemic to help the economy grow, the Fed is raising rates. The Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates to combat stubbornly high inflation. Hill this morning, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell signaling more interest rates hikes are coming this year, and they could come at a faster pace and hit a higher peak. If the totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Now, if you know what are these interest rates and how does it curb inflation, please skip to this timestamp. But for those who don't know, here's a very, very simple explanation of the same. 
You see guys just like banks lend money to companies the Federal Reserve which is the central bank of America they lend money to commercial banks and charge them an interest and then these commercial banks give loan to the common people in the form of home loans car loans etc and this interest that the Federal Reserve charges to the commercial banks is what you call as repo rate and in exchange for these loans the commercial banks are required to deposit securities such as government bonds or treasury bills as collateral so let's say bank of america deposits securities with the federal reserve and gets a loan from the federal reserve at 6.15% interest now bank of america would use this money to give a loan of $80000 to mr jackson and this loan will be given to mr jackson at an interest of 8.15% and this delta of 2% is what makes bank of america's profits but when inflation spikes if the federal reserve raises the interest from 6.15 to 6.25% even bank of america will have to increase the home loan interest from 8.15 to 8.35% to make a profit and if you look at the impact of this on loans it's very very significant to give you an example of the same let's say mr jackson has taken out a home loan of $300000 on a 20 year tenure and he makes $8000 per month as his income so if the interest rate goes from 7% in april 2022 to 9.25% in january 2023 the emi would go up from $2336 to $2728 to repay the exact same loan within the original tenure and this is an emi increase of 16.7% So let's say Mr Jackson's effective savings at the end of all expenses is about $1500. But now after the increase in interest rates when Mr Jackson pays $392 extra in his EMI, Mr Jackson would only have $1108 to spend. And in total for the entire year his purchase power will decrease by $392 into 12 months that is by $4704. So as you can imagine when the Jackson family has $4704 less in their budget in order to make up for their extra cost the Jackson family will cut down on movie outings dine outs and vacations and similarly when home loan interests are increased all across America millions of Americans will buy less movie tickets spend less on clothes and spend less on vacations So this way the demand for products will go down eventually the businesses in America will have to decrease the price of their products to make it affordable for their customers so if a diaper store sold diapers at $3 a pack after interest rate increase they will have to sell the same diaper at $2.8 a pack to get their customers to buy it this is how when the federal reserve increases the interest rates it affects the price of the products all across America and when these prices go down the federal reserve effectively controls inflation by increasing the interest rates now the math that we saw is only for a hike of 2.5% and you could already see how difficult loan repayments actually became right well guess what between 2020 and 2022 the interest rate in the us was just 0.08% now do you realize people 0.08% is such a low interest that even the banks gave out very low interest loans So guess what the Americans started borrowing millions of dollars with absolutely no worry at all but this is when the Russia Ukraine war happened and this way the oil prices shot up inflation shot up and then it led to the feds hiking the interest rates inflation is near historic highs now it is going to be very challenging it has been made significantly more challenging by the events of the last few months. This is a huge burden for most families now paying nearly $450 more a month just for the basics. And you will be shocked to know that after 2020, the feds have hiked the interest rates not by 1, not by 2, but by 4.25% to 4.33%. That's 425 basis points in just 1 year. This is the first part of our story whereby the feds have suddenly hiked the interest rates in order to curb inflation. If this is very very clear to you, now let's come to the second part whereby we try to understand how did this Federal Reserve interest rate hike affect the Silicon Valley Bank. Now in case of SVB because the Federal Reserve lowered the interest rates to 0.08%, the two years of 2020 and 21 were the best years for the Silicon Valley Bank. This is because they could borrow money from the Federal Reserve at just 0.08% and even if they gave out loans at just 3% interest, they could still make 2.92% in profits. So in 2021 as the global venture funding reached 681 billion dollars, 
SVB saw mass influx in deposits, whereby their deposits jumped from just $61.76 billion at the end of 2019 to triple the amount to $189.2 billion at the end of 2021. And this is where the second phase of SVB started, which is their money deployment strategy. Now, SVB wanted to compete with the top 5 to 10 banks in the US. So, in order to attract the customers from these big banks, the Silicon Valley Bank paid a high deposit rate to attract customers from these big banks. So, while Bank of America paid an average rate of 0.96% on deposits in the fourth quarter, the industry average was 1.17%, whereas SVB paid an insane interest rate of 2.33%. Now, do you realize 2.33% on $10,000 does not look like a big deal. But if you are a funded startup with $100 million in your account, 2.33% is $2.33 million of extra revenue to run your company. So this was a big, big deal for big businesses. And not so surprisingly, many big customers deposited millions of dollars in the Silicon Valley Bank. And this is where the challenge of the bank came in. If a startup deposited $100 million with SVB, now the Silicon Valley Bank had to find a way to rotate this $100 million such that it could generate $2.33 million in profits. So you know what they did? They invested a large amount, about $91 billion in long dated treasury bonds and mortgage bonds. Now although these assets gave out low interest, they promised steady returns to the banks. Now the catch over here was that these securities were held to maturity investments. Now again, if you understand what is held to maturity and available for sale investments, please skip to this timestamp. If you don't, here's Sushant Bindal to give you a very very simple explanation of the same. Now to understand held to maturity and available for sale securities, what we really need to know is what differentiates them is the intent of the management. Now in terms of held to maturity securities, the intent of the management is to of course hold those securities for a significant period of time that is till the maturity date. Example, even the Silicon Valley Bank had the major exposure to mortgage-backed securities and corporate bonds and municipal bonds etc. When it comes to available for sale securities, the intent is neither to sell those in a very short term period, which is the case with held for trading securities, nor it is like held to maturity. Then what exactly is the intent? The intent is to hold those securities for a while and they have an option to sell whenever they want. So now the question comes, can HTM securities not be sold before the maturity date? They can be. But as we see in FD, if we sell them or liquidate them before the maturity date, it has a significant cost involved. Basically in HTM, if you park $1 billion, it will not be liquid cash until the maturity period. And if you liquidate your funds, just like when you break your FD, it will cost you very heavily to exit. And this is where SVB invested billions of dollars into long-term mortgage securities that had more than 10 years to maturity. And this led to an asset liability mismatch. As you can see in this chart, $91 billion were parked in held to maturity investments and only $26.1 billion were available for sale investments. And according to the stats, out of these $91 billion, SVB invested $80 billion in illiquid mortgaged backed securities. Now, if you know what are mortgage backed securities, please skip to this timestamp. If you don't, here's again a very, very simple explanation of the same. Let's say Think Bank is an American bank with a very smart team of bankers. Now, if they want to give out a $1 billion loan to multiple home buyers, they've got two options. Number one would be to use their own $1 billion and charge an interest of 5% to the borrowers. Now, this is very risky because number one, $1 billion is a huge sum of money. Number two, $1 billion, if they are stuck with the borrowers, the bank will not have enough money to run the bank. And thirdly, if 50% of the borrowers default, $1 billion worth of cash would be gone, leaving the bank in a cashless state. This is the reason why the bankers of Think Bank came out with a genius strategy. This time, instead of using their own money to give out loans, they put out a mortgage-backed security in the market promising 3% interest with a maturity period of 10 years. Now let's say Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Bank of America and Citibank invest $250 million each to buy one unit of the mortgaged backed security. So collectively they have invested $1 billion with Think Bank, right? Now Think Bank would use this $1 billion to give out loans to home buyers. So it might give out 1000 loans worth $1 million for a 10 year tenure. But while it promised only 3% interest to the investors, it would charge 6% interest to the borrowers. 
and again this 3% delta is what makes think bank's profit now based on the repayment structure think bank would pay a yearly interest to its investors and then after 10 years think bank would return 250 million dollars each to bill gates elon musk bank of america and city bank this is how mortgage backed security works and now there are three things to note over here in order to summarize this entire concept number 1 the bank uses the investors money to lend to home buyers instead of using its own cash number 2 the bank pays back the principal amount only after the maturity period and number 3 if this mortgage backed security is a held to maturity instrument then elon musk or bill gates cannot sell their unit of 250 million dollars to anyone until maturity if they do it will cause them very heavily to exit and this is just like your exit load in mutual funds so just like this when svb invested 80 billion dollars into mortgage backed securities almost 97% of these mortgage backed securities had more than 10 years of maturity period and gave out a weighted average yield of only 1.56%. Now if you remember they had promised their depositors an interest of 2.33% and here the weighted average yield was just 1.56% which means if the same yield continued let alone profits the silicon valley bank would have incurred a loss because of the deposits. But now to make matters worse three more things happened. Number 1 the Federal Reserve which was buying mortgage backed securities after covid recovery they stopped buying these bonds so suddenly the value of the unit of these mortgage backed securities decreased. Secondly when the interest rates was increased by the feds by 425 basis points the demand for the loans fell as a result the demand for mortgage backed securities fell. And lastly these mortgage backed holdings became less attractive because newer and better government bonds came into the market which paid better and had less risk. Now again this is a little complex so let's get back to our Think Bank story. You see Elon bought one unit of this bond for 250 million dollars and Think Bank promised him a yield of 3% which means 7.5 million dollars. But now nobody is buying these mortgage backed securities so Think Bank will have no other option. but to decrease his unit value from 250 million dollars to 200 to just 150 million dollars and the return would still be 7.5 million dollars so now if i buy the security unit for 150 million dollars i would get the same return as elon who bought this unit for 250 million dollars which means while elon's yield is 3% my yield is 5% now do you realize what this means This means the value of Elon's unit has dropped by 100 million dollars from 250 to just 150 million dollars. So his portfolio has taken a big big hit. And just like this in case of Silicon Valley Bank, they had invested 91 billion dollars of the bond portfolio into held to maturity securities for accounting purposes. But as soon as the bond value started dropping, just like Elon's security value dropped from 250 to 150 million, Silicon Valley Bank's security value dropped from 91 billion to just 76 billion dollars. So they stood at a loss of 15 billion dollars. On top of that, just like I was making 5% yield and Elon was just making 3% yield out of the same security, in case of the Silicon Valley Bank, while their yield stood at an average of just 1.6%, the current mortgage security yields were giving a return of 5%. So the conclusion of the second phase is that Silicon Valley Bank had a ton of money. They invested that in bonds, but they had two problems. the value of the bonds dropped by 15 billion dollars and the yield was too less at just 1.6% and this begs the question when this was such a big issue then why did the startups freak out as soon as the bond value went down and why is this panic happening right now well this is why ladies and gentlemen the third phase of the drama starts and let's call it the startup winter You see guys the value of the bonds keeps on fluctuating with market conditions so just like the bond value of Elon Musk slipped from 250 million dollars to 150 million dollars tomorrow when the feds cut the interest rates this bond value might again rise to 250 million dollars so this drop in value of the bond from 250 to 150 million will not be considered as a loss unless Elon actually sells this unit to somebody else at 150 million dollars Similarly in SVB's accounting when the bonds value dropped by 15 billion dollars they were just on paper and until SVB chose to sell the bonds they would not be counted as losses so everything was still fine because the bankers in the silicon valley bank hoped that the bond prices will go up once the US economy recovers so even though the money was stuck there was no problem at all but this is where we saw the rise of startup winter 
whether funding winter is here or not but fear is here everybody is worried about it people talk about it this sunrise sector is going through a funding winter right now the winter for funding in the startup sector as the terminology goes in this industry has certainly set in the winter everybody was alluding to finally seems to be here. The world's largest tech companies have been saying sorry to their employees for firing them at a time when the conversation has firmly moved from managing growth to surviving a recession. The anticipation of a funding winter is what startup is staring at and the cracks are already visible on the ground. This is when the startup funding started to dry off. As a result, the startups that had deposited millions of dollars were finding it difficult to get loans at reasonable interest rates. So guess what? Instead of taking out loans, these startups started withdrawing their money from the deposits in the bank. And this is where SVB witnessed a crisis. As it turns out, SVB's deposits dropped by $20 billion in just three quarters. And when billions of dollars started to be withdrawn, the Silicon Valley Bank was put in a catch-22 situation. And how is that? To meet customers' withdrawals, they needed cash, but most of their money was stuck in bonds. So to get it, they had to sell off these bonds and realize their losses. This is the reason why in a surprise disclosure on 8th of March 2023, the Silicon Valley Bank sold a $21 billion bond portfolio of available for sale securities. Now, the portfolio was yielding an average of 1.79%, which was still far below the current 10-year treasury yield of around 3.9%. So until now, if you remember, they had not recognized the loss because the bond prices could have gone up. But now for liquidity, when they sold these bonds at a lower price, they had to recognize the losses officially. And now, to cover up these losses, SVB tried to raise $2.25 billion from investors in the form of equity and debt. And this came as a complete surprise to their clients because they thought SVB always had enough liquidity to avoid selling their AFS portfolio or available for sale portfolio. And here's where the panic started, whereby all their clients, including venture capitalists like Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, Kotu Management and Union Square Ventures, they all instructed their portfolio businesses to pull their cash from the bank. And once this word spread and firms started pulling out, SVB stock plunged by 60% in just one day. Eventually, the bank had to halt trading its shares. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation that had insured the bank took over and $175 billion in customer deposits came under their control. And now, the insurance company has created a new bank called the National Bank of Santa Clara in order to hold the deposits and other assets. This is the story of the Silicon Valley Bank. Now, how is this going to affect India? Well, if the bank gives the money back to its depositors, which I think they are, then the chaos will be less. But if they don't give back the money, then it would lead to more crunch in the startup ecosystem. But more importantly, because of this SVB crisis, more banks will be pulled under scrutiny. So if anything else comes up, that could become a problem again. So whenever this kind of crisis comes up, all you need to do is check the exposure of the startups or your own portfolio businesses to these banks. If it is less, then you're all good to go. If it is more, then the impact will be more. As far as the SVB bank is concerned, whatever details I can find, I will attach it in the description. That's all from my side of today, guys. You can have a look at all the study materials in the description. I hope you understood all the economic concepts explained in this case study. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 o